movies. Mutilation, decapitation, torture. Does that sound entertaining? More blood than a blood bag. Have we got your attention? Welcome back, Terrestrials, to the Quarantine Movie Reviews. In this episode, we're doing 1993's Tombstone. It's a, it's a western, and though I'm not huge on westerns, this one, I, I, I went into this one thinking... I saw it when I was a kid. I didn't care about it then. I'm not going to care about it now. And Jerry was like, it's a good movie. Watch it. So on. So I watched it, and uh, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, so why don't you kick us off? Yeah, so like you said, yeah, we are dealing with Wyatt Herb's experience in Tombstone, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Uh it starts with him and his brothers getting there, um, making a business for themselves. You know, we're going to strike it rich out west. Yeah! Rooting tootin' cowboys. <laughs> and he, his friend Doc Holliday's out there, but also the bad guys are out there. Yeah. The cowboys who... This was made in the 90s, and I do love the fact that the cowboys, they all have red sashes on mm -hmm. and stuff. It's like, oh, oh, are they the early day bloods? <laughs> you know, uh, like, I kept on, like, every time they would come on, my brain would go, colors, colors, <laughs> colors. You know, like <laughs> just singing iced tea. But, uh, yeah, I think that's iced tea. But, um the the story it's not the most historically accurate version of the tale <laughs> but it does have accuracy when it needs to be mm -hmm. um the whole okay corral shootout that's how it happened everything they say and do they had someone on set who was like no no, no you got to stand here you got to do this that was all to a point but the events that follow and before yeah it's different dates and stuff but yeah. Ah, who cares? This is a good fucking movie. This is good cowboys versus bad cowboys, mm -hmm. and it's just shootout with Kurt Russell and Sam Elliott and you know, the Bill whole Paxton. Bill Paxton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill Paxton. Val Kilmer's uh, is awesome as Doc Holliday. Uh, wow. Like, I just, it's a great movie. There is yeah. no moment where. It gets bland or boring. Right. It's even at the slow points, you're still sitting there enjoying yourself, you yeah. know. So, uh, this is your first time viewing it. How was your first time viewing it? Well, like I said, I went into it going, ah, god damn it. When we picked two movies out of the bucket, and these were the two movies that we were going to review next, we uh, nixed one and we stuck with Tombstone. Um, but like I said, when I pulled it out, I was like, oh, fuck, I don't care about any of these movies. And he was like, it's a good movie. You should watch it. Went home, watched it. It's on Amazon Prime for anybody who wants to watch it that hasn't seen it. Um, it's fucking good. It's so good. Um, Kurt Russell plays White Earp. Uh, it kinda, he kind of took me out of it because all I could see was just Jack Burton. Um, he is always going to be Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China. So anything I see him in, the entire time he's on the screen, I'm just like, Jack Burton, Jack Burton, where's my truck? So uh, that took me out a little bit. But what did bring me back in was all the goddamn mustaches. <laughs> no, but uh, there were so many mustaches. Um, but uh, when I initially started watching it, uh, I was like, I, I didn't know the story very well, the history the history of uh, what the whole movie was about. Yeah. Um, but I, I started watching, and so I see Val Kilmer's character, Doc Holliday, and I'm like, who's this smug little prick? <laughs> and why is he so goddamn sweaty? Yeah. How much cocaine is he doing? Because he is pouring sweat, and nobody else is sweating. 
Um, but, you know, you come to find out why he's sweating later. And as the movie progresses, he is by far the best thing in the movie. Um, he is fucking hilarious. Uh, and he's just a badass. Yeah. Um, and like Jerry said, it's not historically accurate. We all know now it's publicized that Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday were cold-blooded killers and they were not good people. Um, and plus in the 90s, there was a resurgence of all these old westerns. Yeah. The idea, I mean, you had like, what was that, Unforgiven, mm-hmm. Dances with Wolves, yeah. this, uh, Lone Range, uh, you know, all these epic style yeah. westerns. But this is the only one that really like sticks out as a must watch. <laughs> Um, yeah. This is definitely a must-watch movie. Um, just for the acting and the uh, the action, they mm-hmm. made they made a simple cowboy shootout very very action based. You know, yeah. getting away from like you know the eighties of the blown out Stallones and stuff mm-hmm. and the uh, Schwarzeneggers and stuff. It, it, this more deals with just gun shooting yeah as it should be you know and yeah. it's it's a great western i mean the good guys are good the bad guys are bad the bad mm-hmm. guys are like and i kind of like the bad guys a little bit more yeah um you mentioned that yeah johnny ringo uh, is just an amazing like bad guy every time he's on screen and he's talking there's like tense music yeah like just like and he's always squinting and just like talking quietly. Yeah. Where there's other bad guys that are just bumbling idiots. And, you know, uh, uh, what was it? Clanton, I think, was one of the guy's names. The guy that's always tan. The bad guy from Avatar. He, uh, <laughs> he, he just plays bad guys. Uh, he's just a bumbling idiot. But, you know, it's just, it's really cool on how they were able to take so many actors and so many characters Mm -hmm. and kind of mix match them. You lose track of like some people, but some people, you know, it's like, okay, I know who that is. And yeah, I like what he's done throughout the movie. So I really like the, the buildup. Like it it just, it escalates. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we start out white herbs, making a business for themselves and then you know they start making some money and some business the cowboys get pissed they're getting more mad they're getting more mad at the herbs the herbs Mm -hmm. are running a casino game Mm -hmm. you know uh, it's just escalating escalating oh the the herbs become lawmen and then the cowboys are just like y'all are y'all are y'all are dead Mm -hmm. basically at that point and it becomes like this just shootout of the law and you know the gang basically and yeah. you know who do you root for do you root for you know the law or do you root for you know the gang who who is right and who is wrong you know uh that that comes up quite a few times in this movie whatever team doc holiday's on i'm on <laughs> that fucking character val kilmer killed it yeah man. i cannot speak highly enough of him in this movie. I don't really care for Val Kilmer in general. Um, but in this movie, he was, he stole the show. No. He was the reason I kept watching. I was like, what next? Um, I mean, he's, you know, he's got all the quotable lines too. You know, yeah, I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. And, I'll be your Huckleberry. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, there's a uh, he does the Latin scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, 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 you don't have to do this, Doc. Oh, why, why? Uh, and then just the way that he talks, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that that yeah. southern yeah. charm, you know, kind yeah. of. Yeah, Val Kilmer, you know, he he blows it out of the park, and you know, a couple other you know one-liners in this. You know, I will always like the character of Curly Bob. Uh, Bill, Curly Bill, Curly yeah. Bob, yeah, whatever. Curly, uh, <laughs> he he looks at the herbs who are leaving. They are wicking, licking their wounds, and yeah. leaving this town to feed it. And he looks right at him and goes, "Well, <laughs> bye." And, <laughs> oh, and I just I like simple lines, yeah. but it's it's infamous in the nineties. I yeah. mean, this is yeah, like you said, like. 
I watched it in the 90s, and you were the kid, like, I don't want to watch this, but you should have watched it because yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, did you find anything that you didn't like other than, you oh, know, just yeah. a couple of the I mean, shooting? There was, there was definitely a few things in it that, like, okay, so as, the whole, as a whole story, the love story was not necessary. Every last bit of that, even though, okay, so they say um, in the beginning when the guy is doing the juggling or whatever and he shoots the clay, all that is historically accurate. Yes. All that absolutely happened. All those words were said. Like, that whole thing is accurate. None of that was necessary to the story. The love story with the actress, not necessary. No. Um, the wife's opium addiction, not necessary. None of this stuff was necessary to sh- for this movie. Mm. They could have cut it and made it an hour and a half of badassery, but they extended it to two hours with all this dumb shit. Yeah. Um, it was completely unnecessary. So as a whole, that I did not like. Mm-hmm. I, I kept finding myself going, uh, okay, now get back to them. Like, get back to what I'm here for. Um it, it doesn't take me out of the movie, but it definitely slows it oh, down yeah, to, it slows it you know, down. I mean, yeah, if it wasn't for those, it would be like, like you said, an hour and a half of just gun shooting, mm-hmm. rooting, tooting, woo, you know, <laughs> uh, so it, it has its place, but at the same time, I can see where too much is, you know, too, too much is too much in this case. So. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it is a long movie. It's mm. over two hours long. Yeah. But it goes quick. I mean, when you're watching, sometimes yeah. it feels like, wow, you know, uh, when when it speeds up. I, I, there's a one point, the, the middle of the movie, basically, is the train scene. Right. You know, and then it just changes yeah. over to a completely different style. Of, not style of movie, but just completely but different. But it is like a, it's like from the middle of the movie on, mm-hmm. it's like the ending of Django. Where he's just going to town in that house, yeah. like, shooting everybody. Like, um but it, it, again like the movie even the like so the thing that i was kind of and i even made a point to write this down yes we write and prepare for this um the ending uh he should have just left it after he leaves doc holiday hmm. there's he didn't need to go to colorado to find his act like the movie was over yeah it should have doc's ended. dead he won and then, of course, you know, that badass fucking scene where Val Kilmer, where he was like, oh, he's wow. going to meet you at the tree at 12. Yeah. And then they run away. And then, you know, he like, you can't, like, you can't. why they're supposed to I meet him there. I didn't think you had it in you. Walk up and it's like, I'm boom, your huckleberry. It's fucking Doc Holliday. Yeah. No, I, I even went, oh, shit, son. <laughs> Why, Johnny Ringo. You look like somebody just walked over your grave. Fight's not with you, Holiday. I beg to differ, sir. We started a game we never got to finish. <clears throat> Play for blood, remember? I was just fooling about. I wasn't. And this time... Um, I was just like, oh, shit, son, he's going to yeah. get him. And, you know, there's there's purpose to that because... Because Doc Holliday is sick, mm-hmm. he has no reason to live, basically. Yeah. You know, he's not he's not going to be making his fortune. All of that, that gambling he does is for fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so if he was, if Johnny Ringo were to shoot him, it would just take him out of his misery because of the tuberculosis, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a couple of points like that, you know. Uh, it, at the OK Corral, Doc Holliday, he he runs shotgun. Mm-hmm. And anybody knows if you're running shotgun compared to sidearms, you only have two shots. You only mm-hmm. have two shots before you have to reload. Fuck it, you know? And, and I, I like that about And I think that, 
as well as that part, um, they also make mention, he makes, Doc says himself several times, he makes different comments along the lines of like, well, I don't have any friends except Wyatt Earp, mm. so that's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he makes mention that he is he has got his back yeah. to the end, even though in certain cases he's like, no, we don't need you to fight. We don't want you to fight. He's like, why would not? It's, you know, it's, you know, a good day to die, basically. Like, yeah. I got your back. We're going to roll on this. But uh, another thing. I so this is a little bit of story time, but uh, last my mom's been doing genealogy, and she came across some uh, information of somebody who lived in 1861 in our family, and she was reading off a list of items that he owned. Um, he had a shotgun; it costed four dollars. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize this shit was so cheap back. Well, you know, four dollars back then was that's a dollar bill, son. You better take your hat off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know. Because they dropped guns in this movie. Like, no, 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 we'll get one some other time. Yeah. Like, they just, like, the way uh, Earp, uh, or Holiday, when he um, shoots the shotgun at the OK Corral, he just throws it down. He shoots his pistols. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't give a shit about these guns. And it's like, now you take the ammo, you take the gun, you, you know, it's useful yeah. and it's expensive as shit. So you don't just leave it laying there. Mm-hmm. But, and that in that time era in that era in that time era um you know it was just like a dime a dozen everybody had a bunch of them and you know yeah i mean yeah especially for like you said the price the price you know a dollar you know yeah. was like oh man what are we a millionaire look at he's got a yeah. dollar if i can shoot six out of six on albert's behalf you owe him a dollar if i can't he owes you a dollar. Wait, what? Hmm? A dollar? I've never seen a dollar. Nobody's got a dollar. Let us see the dollar. Come on. You owe him a dollar. <gasps> there it is. It's beautiful. Take your hat off, boy. That's a dollar bill. I, I got to say, I really love this movie. Yeah. Um, and the action was kind of violent. Um, There's definitely some... and. Animals were definitely harmed in the making of this movie. They could not put that uh, PSA out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I guess in that time, in the 1990s, it, nobody cared yet. Um, but, all right, so what are you going to give it for stars? Uh, I'm going to go three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to go three and a half. It's, like I said, really good um, in the Western department, uh, maybe in the... Not in the dialogue, but just like uh, there's when there's drama, Mm -hmm. it's you know, there's some really good moments, but sometimes drama is meant there, like, like you said, in the love story, Mm. that's that's fake drama. You're trying to create drama where there is no drama, but when you know you have Doc Holliday dying in the bed, that is drama. That's that's like okay, there it is, you know, Mm -hmm. don't don't create fake drama, so. Uh, but I'm going to go three and a half for, you know, a good moment. I couldn't find very much about this movie that I don't like, you know, so. Okay. Yep. Um, shockingly, I'm going to give this four stars. Um, like I said, I I think part of the reason I'm giving it is four is because I went into it going, God damn it, Jerry's got me watching this fucking, and then yeah. boom, it was a great movie. Yeah. And then, you know, Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday destroys it no. um and then you know all around it was a good movie it was it was a shoot 'em up mm-hmm. kill 'em movie um uh, yeah all right four stars three and a half it's a good movie if you've seen it tell us what you like about it if you don't like it tell us what you don't like about it and if you haven't seen it go watch it right um shit there was one line that i wanted to say at the end of this I know it was a doc all day long. And it wasn't I'll be your Huckleberry. What other shit did he say? 